picking out a hack squat leg press machine. I want to make this video because I didn't see any other videos like this one. All the videos that I've seen about these machines were just basically commercials for a specific product. I want to make a video that's useful to somebody that's looking to possibly get one of these. So I'm going to tell you everything that I thought about in making my decision to purchase this piece of equipment. All right, the first thing that I had to think about is I have a home gym, so my space is limited. For that reason, I wanted to get the most out of the machine that I could possibly get out of it. All right, I knew for sure that I wanted the machine to do the leg press and the hack squat. So once I started looking into these machines, I started to learn that there's a lot of little features about them that make them different. And some of those things can really be a big difference. For example, the foot plate for the leg press on some of them are in a fixed position. And then there's other ones you can actually pick different angles. You can put this in different angles, right? So if I want to sit down there in the leg press position and do a calf raise, I can angle this down so that there's some space there for my heels to go up and down. Or if for whatever reason you need to, which I do, I don't actually have it at a 90 degree. When I do leg press, I put it a little bit more angled and it's just more comfortable for me and it allows me to bring it down further than I could the other way more safely on my back is how it feels. So having that adjustment right there um, is, is a big reason why I picked this machine. All right, let me just start with the first thing. I did not want this machine. There was another machine that I wanted over this machine. I'm gonna drop a picture of the machine right here. And if you look at this machine, it has springs at the bottom of the safety catch. All right, now this machine right here, when you're in the leg press position, you, you uh, open that, it's your safety catch, right? So that one has springs on it, this one does not. I wanted those springs just because it was something extra and I thought it, it would make it, it would give the machine longevity. But now that I have this machine, I realize this is a solid piece of steel. So like if I needed a spring to help cushion that weight, then I would probably just be slamming the weight around, you know, and there's no need for that. So I don't think there's any need for the springs really. Now looking back at the, this is a force USA. Why they call it USA, I couldn't tell you because you can only buy them in Australia. It's a ultimate leg press hack squat. So it's a ULPSHS. And the other thing about it is the plate storage space. The two legs at the back of the machine have plate storage space on them. And that's a real big one right there. Whenever you get into dealing with leg presses, you're dealing with a lot of plates. So having those close to the machine is actually an issue I still have to figure out. I'm, I'm just packing them right now. I'm packing my plates from my Smith machine back and forth to this machine. <clears throat> These machines are rated, all the ones that I've seen are rated between a thousand and two thousand pounds capacity. If you want the real heavy duty leg press that's like over 2,000 pounds and stuff, then it's going to just be a leg press, you know, or it'll just be a hack squat. I didn't see any real super heavy duty ones that were the combo in one. And I needed the combination, so I was stuck with getting something between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. The force machine claims with bands it, it, it gets you 2,000 pounds but just with the weight is 1,500 pounds or it might just be a thousand and also this machine here is a capacity of a thousand pounds so either way it goes that's a lot of damn plates that you're going to want storage for 
and all the machines that were like around I think $1,500 or below didn't have storage really and then once they got up to around two grand when they had storage on them but even though this was two grand it, it don't have storage so I sacrificed that part of it and then the last thing about the uh, the force machine is at the very back on the ground you can see wheels there and I thought that that would be handy if I needed to move the machine I could just pick up one end and roll it on those wheels which this machine doesn't have the wheels I couldn't get that machine though the only people that had it available was in Australia so the next thing I went to was this leg press machine this is a Bodycraft F660 okay so if you can possibly go in and actually try out the machine before you get it that's what I would highly recommend and let me show you this machine right here has adjustable these are the shoulder pads and they go they go up really high now whenever I do let me show you why that's important when I do my calf raises I have three holes visible and let me show you what I'm talking about I can get up under here and do my calf raises now when I do hack squats I have it all the way down this way I can go as low as I can possibly go now if this was in this position and I try to do my calf raises I'm, I'm hitting yeah see that the only negative review that I seen on this Bodycraft F660 is that you can't go low enough in the hack. Now I got it all the way down, which means the weight's going to be as high as it can possibly be so that I can go as low as I can. And this, low I'm getting. Do you see my legs? All right, see that angle? That's as low as you can go. Now for me, I feel like that's, that's plenty low enough for me, I feel like. Now, when I'm doing hack squats, sometimes I will bump at the bottom and I'll think in my mind, shit, I wish I wouldn't have hit. Like I could have went a little bit lower. What I could do to fix that problem would be take and add a block in here. All right, right here, y'all see this? Now look at this too, hang on, leave it on here. One of the things, whenever I was picking this out, I kept looking at, some of these will have a square bar on top of the shoulder pad, and some of them have this round bar. And I'm like, what's gonna keep that shoulder pad from twisting and getting loose? Well, there's actually a piece of metal right here welded on. I just wanted to show people that also, so if you have any question, I only found one picture that actually showed this, so here's some footage of it. Now back to the subject. If I wanted to go a little bit lower, I could actually get some bolts that are longer and put a block in between this metal and this shoulder pad. So if I really wanted to get lower in the hack, I could take a one and a half inch piece of wood and put, it, put that in between there and it would actually bring my shoulder pads down. So when I do a review, I'm going to do an actual review on this machine, which this ain't. This is just letting y'all know about picking out one. I'm going to tell that what they need to do is they need to lower this. Like if the company would have lowered this down, like put that down here and cut this right here down one notch. If they would have cut that down, then they wouldn't have one bad review on this machine. The only bad review I've seen it was people saying they were bottoming out on the hack squat. Yeah. All right, so guys, I'm a six foot one. I think I'm actually six foot two. I need to measure myself one day, but I think I'm actually six foot two. If I did not have this shoulder adjustment and like say it was low or high, 
it'd be messed up. So for that reason, like this is the only one that I seen that had this adjustment. And if I'd have got one that was fixed in a bad position for my body type, then I'd have just been screwed, I guess. Or not, I'd have been doing some welding or figuring it out. But uh, so anyhow, if you can go in there and test it out before you buy it. All right, now the other thing about this machine, there's two different ones. There's one where this tube is hollow from the inside. On this machine, this, is, this tube has four sides, but some of them will just be a C. This will just be a C and it's open and there's rollers. It'll actually be on rollers rolling on a track basically. And this will be the track on both sides and there's rollers. Well, those, eventually the rollers wear out or get flat spots in them, or the track itself gets a spot in it. I've, every review that I read, people who had the ones with rollers on a track said it had a catching point at some point within it. It either had a bump in it, or it got tight on them, the wheels got flat spots on them. I knew that I didn't want that. So what I wanted was the linear bearing, which is what this right here is. All right, guys, you see this right here? This is a solid steel rod. And then look down here. You see this in here? See that in there? All right, watch. That's got bearings inside of it. You hear that? So that's a linear bearing and supposed to be this thing's never going to wear out. It's a solid piece of steel and there's, it sounds to me like there's little ball bearings in there also. That's what that sound is. That's those ball bearings rolling. So anyways, that's a linear bearing and it's not supposed to ever um, wear out or bend. Alrighty, so that pretty much covers that linear bearing, I think. Another thing is some of these machines are 45 degree angle machines, and some of them are 30. So, like the 30 would be laying down more. This is a 45. And I don't know, but in my mind, I thought, well, if I get a 45, it'll be more upright. So therefore, the weight's going to feel heavier. And I should be able to get more out of the weight since it's only a 1,000 pounds capacity. Would probably be a 1,000 pounds on here would be heavier than what a 1,000 pounds on a 30 degree angle machine would be because it's laying down more. And it should have been theoretically able to take up more space in my tight garage uh, gym I got here. So that was two reasons why I wanted the 45 degree angle machine, not the 30 degree machine. Another thing about this machine that I like, a lot of the machines, the backrest for when you're doing leg press, this backrest right here had to be taken off and put up here for the backrest for hack squats. And usually anytime I gotta move something on and off like that, it's just gonna be a problem. Probably gonna get a tear in the damn, what is it, the upholstery on it, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that these pads are stationary other than when I do hack squats, I just flip that, or calf raises, I just flip that out of the way. But it still stays there, you know? So I kind of like that feature about this machine also. One other thing about the machines that I noticed was the handle grip. Like I think there was a model with the hand grip that was up here on that, which I wouldn't like because I don't know, maybe it would be fine, I don't know, whatever. But this one has a hand grip that's completely separate from that. And that's this hand grip down here for when you're doing leg presses. I like that about it. 
Uh, this thing down here th that you put your feet on for the hack squats and the, uh, or for the hack squats and the calf raise, well really just the hack squats because the calf raises are from the block. It could be better or it could be bigger. Like whenever I'm doing my hack squats, a lot of times the ball of my feet ends up almost hanging off right here at the top. Actually, let me do it with this shoe. A lot of times I'll be like this and it's kind of like hanging off or I feel like I could probably go a little bit wider you know, and that's just what it is though. But I'm making do with it. I think it could probably be possibly six inches all the way around, bigger on all three sides. That would probably be better. Uh, but other than that, really, I don't have anything bad to say about this machine, just that these shoulder pads, this should be down. They should take about an inch and a half off this and move that down there. All right, I want to go ahead, and the last thing, I showed this in the beginning, but I want to give you guys a close-up of it. This is the donkey calf raise, donkey, fucking donkey what, squats and shit? I think that needs to go up. Hold on. Yeah, dang, that seems kind of high. I don't do these, obviously, but if I wanted to, I got the option. So anyways, I don't use that little thing, man. I just kind of keep it thrown to the side, really. But if you wanted to do them donkeys, it comes with that, so there's that option. I probably should actually start using them. I'm still just breaking it in for real and I ain't got to the to all the features of it yet. Alrighty guys, that's everything about the old leg press. Thank you for watching the video. Till next time.